I was talking to the sister, she's the mother of our brother, and I, we, we, we expressed our gratitude, and as well that she is an amazing mother, that she brought up our brother, mashallah, very well mannered, very well behaved, there's something which we didn't say earlier. And she came to ask some questions. The question is that why God has to have this kind of micromanage to tell us in every single details in our life why we have to do this, why we shouldn't have to do this, etc. Yeah, is that your question? Now let me tell you something. Now, since God has created us yeah, and give us, firstly, there are main things, there are main concepts. Firstly, the main concept that behind our creation that God wants from us to submit our will to His will, to believe in Him, to follow His guidance. Yeah. That's why he has sent prophets and messengers, all of them, they came to convey the message of God to us, to submit our will to his will. So that's why, that's the main concept. And that's why the person will, will gain the salvation in the hereafter, if the person submit his will to the will of God. That's the meaning of Islam. Islam means submission to God. Now since when a person submits to God, of course, now we need to understand as well, what are, what are the things that serves this purpose? What are the things that serves this concept to submit our will to the will of God? For example, and I will mention to you something. Maybe you came from a Christian background, correct? Yeah? And you know, in Christianity, you will find some main things as long as you believe in Jesus, and you believe that he is the Son of God, or you believe he is God, etc. And then, apparently, you do what you wish. Do everything. So, so that you will find Christians, You'll find them on Saturday nights, they will do everything. They will go clubbing, they will do all kinds of horrible things. And the next day they will say they will go to church as if they, there is nothing, they haven't done much. And that's why in Islam, no, there are certain things, there are rules and regulations. For example, you as a mother, you don't want your son to have to take drugs, correct? You don't like that. If you say to him, don't take drugs, but he will say to you, what, it, I'm not harming you. I'm taking drugs for me, it's my body, I can do what I can. But you, you care about him, maybe sometimes more than himself. As he's a young boy, he might do certain things, he might, you know, he might do some crazy things. So you want to protect him, yeah? And that's part of the protection that as well, and God has, is more merciful than you on us. God is more merciful than our mothers on us. So, so that's why God is telling us not to take drugs, not to harm our body. That including cigarettes, for example. Maybe you say, what's the, what's the harm in smoking one cigarette or two cigarettes or three cigarettes? You, if you see your son as well, smoking cigarettes, just normal cigarettes, then you will say, yeah, even vaping, you will say this is not good for, him, for his health. You know that. You know it's not good for the health. So that's when Islam made these rules. Made anything that harms the body is not permissible in Islam. Anything that harms your body, so that's why you took this body from you take this body, which God God blessed you with this body. You when you die at least surrender this body as you took as you took it. Try your best not to harm your body. And Allah has mentioned this clearly in the Quran that don't throw yourself with your own hands into into death. And as well, there are rules in Islam that is called La Dara wa La Dara, even though it's based on one, one hadith that even that hadith has something about uh, in terms of authenticity, but the rule is acceptable in Islam to say anything that harms yourself or harming others that's not permissible in Islam. So that's why you will find Islam killing people not to harm themselves, that including not to smoke cigarettes, including for example not to drink alcohol. You will say what's the problem of drinking one, one, cup, one cup of alcohol? Yeah? And you know some, some types of alcohol like vodka or some other things there are even small, small amount of it could make the person intoxicated. And if you, if you just contact the police, for example, here in this country, you will realize the effect of alcohol on, in, in, uh, on the people, not just only on individuals, on the people as well, on the community, just only come, come to Saturday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday night and see, sorry, sorry, Friday and Saturday night and see what's happening. All kinds of things, fights, problems, things like that. People, they harm. So that's why you'll find the rules, the rules of Islam, whatever a sufficient or a, a satisfactory amount of it makes you intoxicated, even a small amount is not permissible in Islam. So Islam made rules. So that's why it's not allowed to take drugs, it's not allowed to smoke hashish or to smoke things, or it's not allowed even to smoke cigarettes, it's not allowed for us as well to drink alcohol regardless whatever the quantity is and this is in order to protect ourselves our bodies and as well our mind
is he protected by, for example, having to go and provide for his wife and not being at home looking after his children if that's what he wants to do? Why is he obliged, if you like, to be looking after, you know, being providing for the family if what he wants is to look after his children, for example, providing that his wife wants to work? Yes. That's one of the rules. I believe. You mean? You maybe mean, I'm wrong, but yeah. I, I believe that that's one of the rules that the, the Islam has. That you know, the man has to provide, the woman has to can choose either provide or um, yes, come with children. Yes. So, in what way is he protected by God by doing that? Okay. Okay. Another thing. I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I understand the alcohol, I understand many other things, but for example, that one, I think, is affecting his freedom without Good. protecting him from anything. Okay. okay. I will ask you a question. Uh, how many children you have? How many children? How many children? Two. Two. When he was one month old, when he was one month old, were you able to go out and work? If I was able to? When he was one month old. Yes. When he was one month old. Don't you think it is better for you to be by your, by your baby? when he was one month old, to be by your baby, to breastfeed him, to look after him, and then the father will provide for you and him while you are at least taking care of that of that thing. Don't you think it's fair? It could have been my case, but I know there is not in other people's cases. I'm talking about general, I'm talking about the general cases. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, yeah. you know, yes. But when you're, saying, when, when you're doing a rule, or, or the Islam is putting a rule, there's no exceptions. No, 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 there are exceptions. But there are exceptions in the world. No, there, there are, are exceptions. exceptions. where, you know, there's men that are more inclined to look after kids and women that are more inclined to work outside. But if, if you have a rule that doesn't allow for that flexibility, well, well, yeah. you know, then what do you do? You, you, you're just constraining you, isn't it? <coughs> What's your name, by the way? Maria. Maria? Maria. In Islam, there are exceptions. The one who told you there are no exceptions in Islam is wrong. There are exceptions. Like for example, I know a sister living in this country who, whom her husband was severely ill, was unable to work, yeah? So she went out to work. And she asked the same question. She said, what should I do? I said, yes, you go and work because Islam, there are, of course, there are exceptions. But, but if, if it's not because of a reason like that, it's just because of choice. Okay. No, no, Imagine I, I, it's I, just choice. I want to work out and my husband wants to okay. look after children. Again, What's wrong with it that? is to, no problem. It's totally up to you. And that's why these things are, 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 are considered. Let me tell you something. Islam gives kind of general rules. If you choose, if you choose to do something, there are general rules. You are not breaking the rules by you choose to work because islam by the way and I'll, that's for you to know as well that islam as well encourages encourages men generally to take their role as the provider for the house that's that's their role that's their main role now it is upon the agreement between husband and wife that if for example i will give you my own example like my wife she works i, I i'm married and my wife she works yeah. so you're not at home looking after the children no i, I sometimes stay to look after them but, but at certain men, point but you provide i i am the main provider I am the main provider, I am the main one, I'm the main thing. But what if your wife comes to you and say, look, I want it the other way around, I want to see Okay, all right, now here again, we, it's up to the choice between the husband and wife. This, these are things are managed between the husband and wife. At the end of the day, there are certain main rules in Islam telling you what's the rule, what they have to do, what you don't have to do. Do you work any, any professional, any professional work? You work, yeah? For example, there are certain tasks for you to do, correct? If you choose to do other tasks, no one is preventing you from doing other tasks. So that's totally up to you. As long as the management agrees that with the, with the new tasks that you want to do. So Islam gives kind of general rules that you are, these are the tasks. The task of the husband is the main provider. The task of the wife is the one who's taking care of the house, etc. Now, it doesn't mean that she cannot work. She is entitled to work. It doesn't mean if he chooses to stay home. And I know some brothers who literally staying at home, looking after their children and their wives work. That's totally up to them. That, but is that, is that not against the rules? No. It's up to the agreement because these are things I between the agreement. That. Sorry, but then I was a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was a rule. Yeah, no. So you could not be again, able to again, do generally, as I said to you, Islam gives general rules with the with family things. Now it's between the husband and wife, up to, total up to them, whatever they choose. Like for example, I came across, I, I do sometimes make marriage contracts, Islamic marriage contracts. So I came, some sisters, which is the women, they will they will ask certain conditions. Say, I need. I need a maid, I need a, a, you know, a servant at home. She's entitled to ask for this. And if he's able to provide, if, he's, if, he's, if he accepts this, that condition, he has to provide for her someone to work, to, to help her at home. So that's totally between 
between the husband and wife, all of them, it's between them, whatever they choose to do, it's totally up to them. So that's why Islam gives kind of general rules, and now it's up to the husband and wife what they choose to do. I mean, if, if that is exactly. the case, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't understand that. Yeah. I understood. Now we understood it. The other way around. Yeah, no, no. Sheikh, I understood it as, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I thought it wasn't permissible, for, for example, for uh, the man to just stay at home. Like, the man has to provide always. That's what I thought. The man has to provide. That's his, that's his, that's his task. It yeah. doesn't mean if, if between him and his wife, they choose to, they, he choose, for example, not to, uh, you know, not to work, and she choose to do that. And they have agreed this between the agreement. So that's as halal. Long, that's yes, halal. And for example, some sisters who are very rich, for example, I know some sisters who are, mashallah, give, they have inheritance, etc. And then they will marry up someone, they will say to you, you know, I don't want you to work, whatever, just, you know, just, well, let's chill together. That's total up to them. And she's going to provide. That's between, it's up to the agreement yeah, between them. No problem. Then in that case... It's because I told, I told my mom that it that's was... That's why you don't tell things that yeah, you do. Yeah, I spoke with that. that but again, that's here it doesn't break. The main concept in Islam is the husband is the provider. That's a concept. It doesn't break that. So that's what we have to understand. This is the rule. So at any point, at any point in the marriage, the wife could say to her husband, you know what, I don't want to work. It is your duty to do that. Then in that case, this is what we call it. It is her right to choose not to work. And it is her right if she chooses wanted to work. Do you understand? So if she, at a certain point, to say to him, I choose, I choose to stay at home, and it is your task to do it. He is he, forced to work. He is forced to work at that point. Just going back to the main, to the main, to the main concept. If they have agreement between them that you know what, no you problem. Let's work. Uh, the, uh, yeah, let's swap roles. That she wanted to work, he stays more at home. That's up to no, them. What's the conversation but, about? Sorry. Let, let, let me finish. I, I'll, no, I'll, what's the I just want to know the. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So. Uh, let me move then the conversation into. I understood that one. Perfect. Okay. So, good. again, another thing that I don't understand is why in Islam um, homosexual relationships are forbidden. Why homosexual relationships are forbidden? Are forbidden. They're not allowed. So yeah. if you. If I, if, if I believe in your faith and I love a woman, why can I not fulfill my life with that woman? I have to sort of take that, that's my understanding, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but my understanding is that God gives or the Creator gives you the challenges that you can, that you prepare to, fair, to bear, only okay. those that you are prepared to bear. So, so. then why is it that people is created you know with that with that inclination and then at the same time it's not they not they can't fulfill it where we draw the line of the our emotions where do they draw it where we draw it is there any line or there is no line what do you mean i don't, I don't understand okay. the question you said if why homosexuality is not is not if it is forbidden in islam mm -hmm. if i have some emotions or some love towards a woman for example you said yeah. And God give me that, for example, and it's a challenge on me. Yeah. Why in Islam this is forbidden? That's your question, correct? No, my question is if it's homosexual. No, yeah. If you, Why homosexual is forbidden? The women of somebody else. Okay. That's yeah. <coughs> no, no. I'm talking about that. No, I'm talking about that between, like, like, for example, between women and women and men and men. Why, why is, why is it forbidden in Islam? Yeah, 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 yeah. The question is to you: Where we draw the line to our emotion? Is there any line? Is it? What, what is there? <coughs> yeah, I will. Uh, uh, let, let, let me try to explain again. Is there any line to our love? Is there? Can we draw line, or it's okay? We can love anyone, and we can have relation with anyone, according to you. What do you think? I think we can. We can love anyone. That's not a problem. No, I'm talking about desire. I'm talking about desire, like with having desire. Ha, ha, with desire, with intimate relation, etc. Where we draw the line? No line? I'm not, I'm not probably understanding. So, so, so are you limited? For example, so. See, no, what so other limit? But I don't understand that. where is this argument taken to? I will tell you why. I'll tell you where. Someone will say, a man will say, I love a man. Yeah. Why, God, why, I can't, uh, why I can't have a relationship? Yeah. I want to say, I love a woman. Why I can't have this? Yeah. Someone will say, I love my sister. Why I can't have a relationship with her? What's the difference? The difference is that you are, you have a, 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 I can't say it in English. Incest. It's called incest. Yeah, it's incest. Yeah. What, what, it's, it's, a cultural, it's a cultural thing. It's so a cultural thing. Cultural, the, the incest. 
right? So, so why, why do you think it's wrong? I think it's wrong because there why? is, you know, it's, it's cultural to me. To me, it's wrong. Yeah, so, me, so, so wrong. that's why. So where do we draw the line? And some so other you, culture. So what you're saying to me is that Islam draws the line there because in the, in the homosexuality, Islam draws the line there it's, in the same way that we draw the line. Yeah, we draw the line. So that's is why, that what, you're saying? Uh, what I'm saying again, I'm saying kind of what you said and as well adding to this. Our emotion, God, for, for, firstly, if you have some emotion towards something, yeah, that's something between you and, and, uh, and God, that's something we, we, we are not blameworthy for, just only have feelings, just feel normal feelings. But where, it hap where you are blameworthy, you are blameworthy as long as you act upon this emotion or you say it, you start saying publicly, yeah? You start going publicly, I love this woman. Women to say, I love the old women to say, I'm talking about the love which I'm talking about. So that, in Islam, this is forbidden in Islam. Because you draw, that's where, where the line is drawn. So in the same way that for me, Incest is exactly. wrong, is wrong to me. Yes. You saying that homosexuality is wrong yes. for Muslims. Yeah. Is that if, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. So Islam, Islam recognize. Yes, exactly. Islam recognize this emotion. First of all, why God, why God put this emotion in our heart? For what? Why do you think? I don't know. That's that's the, the strange thing, is that the Creator puts that emotion in you, for and what? then. Doesn't let, doesn't let you fulfill it. No, no, no. Yeah. Why? Uh, because it's a challenge, I guess, for you to uh, exactly. Read, uh, to still exactly. Alive if that's so, so that's why you need to direct. We need to direct our emotion. And I, think, I find that, that mind blowing. Yeah. So that Islam. You, you will, you know, that the Creator will fit you under such. <laughs> but by the way, by the way, that's not the no. No, that's not horrible. Just to prove yourself that you were something after your life. Yeah, I will what tell you how. What about psychopaths and murders? Yeah, One second, brother. Let me just. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, there is a lot of, lots of different things. I don't think that is wrong, you see. L listen you to think me. it's wrong. I, I, Incest I, is wrong. Like, Madness. Like what, the is saying is, the limit? What, what I'm saying, we have to, we have to draw the line. Limit, limit, Who draws the line? Yeah. Who draws the line? You said culture draws the line. That's why you said you didn't accept incest because culture. But maybe some other culture allow it. Yeah. So it's okay to do it. So, so where do we draw the line? Another culture forbids something more. Another culture forbids cousins. I know, I know, even in your culture, that marrying cousins is not something good to do. Cousins. If they are in agreement, yes. Yeah, generally, culturally, it's not. If so, there is consent. I'm, I'm trying. Almost, no, no. I would say so it doesn't matter the consent. No, no. If there is consent in both parts, and the problem is the majority of the incest relationships are not done with consent. Yeah. There is normally an abuser yeah. and a victim. No. And that is the line for me. If you say where is the line, for me it's consent. Okay. You Good. can have a relationship with your dad if you want to. If you want to. Consent to, to it. Okay. In the majority of the cases, now, now you, you just... don't. Okay. Okay, so I'm changing my argument. It's not culture, it's consent. Oh, consent. So now you change now you change your culture. You change my, your, your my mind. Argument. Your argument. Again, you see here, so that's why since it is subjective according to you, you just now made two opinions. If we discuss with another person, we'll, we'll have another three opinions. Another person will have four opinions. Where we where we have we should have something objective thing to decide. Is is it you to decide? Is the culture decide? So you're saying the objective thing is objective. Creator. Yeah, the objective thing has to be someone who is independent. Someone, not someone. Yeah, someone. God, God is, is one. God, God is someone. Something. God is God is right, one. Right. No, by no, the way, is but we don't a say about no, 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 not not as a person. No, by the way, someone. God is one because we yeah. believe God is one. Yeah. So, so uh, let's say even something you wanted to do that, and God is a thing, no problem. So, so to say, we need someone or something. Let's say. That who is independent, who is not biased, and tell us what are uh, where we draw the line, in order for us to understand what's the purpose of what what the purpose we are here. Since we have accept, if you accept that we've been created by this Creator by God, and God has created us for a purpose, and the purpose is to submit our will to His will, and part of that is to do what He told us to do and to stay away from the things that He told us to stay away from. Let me finish. I, I understand. I'm trying to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Then after that, what we have, we have to know that God has drawn the line for us. And this line, we need to know, going back objectively, what is the purpose of this emotion? The purpose of this emotion is basically is about reproduction, correct? To have children. 
to reproduce, not just only emotion, because at the end of the day, all these kind of relationship is about having children and, and as well and bringing families together. Part of it is part of it. And as well, Allah says to us in the Quran, part of it, Allah says in the Quran, we have created you from a man and a woman. And Allah Azzawajal said, and brought between you love and mercy. Yeah, Mawadda, which is love, the absolute love. And mercy, and mercy between each other. This is between the husband and wife. So Allah Azzawajal, part of part of this purpose, that Allah put this emotion in us, that firstly, that we love our wives, that men love their, their, their wives, and then the, the wives love loving their husband, have mercy towards each other, have have good relationship with each other, in order for them as well to co to, to, to stay together in a in a strong relationship as a family, and it will be healthy for, for themselves, for their own health, and as well it's healthy for the community, as building communities, and as well it is healthy for as well having children, and as well healthy for the children, bringing the children. So all of these things, putting them together, then you will understand the purpose behind it. So it's not just only we, we unleash our emotion the way that we think, and then after that to say, okay, you said consent. Okay, anyone can have consent about anything. That's why, what is the, look at the consequence of even, of a consent relationship. Look at the consequence, look at the diseases, look at the problems that's happening in the community. Look at even to the people who, have, who are even saying, yeah? Uh, no, I'm saying to you, these are the consent. Yes, yes, there's, there's lots of things that we yeah, 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 yeah. shouldn't be doing, drinking, to me, homosexuality is not against it. It's not, it's not part of it. No, no, it's, no if, you, if you are born homosexual and you love... There is no one born homosexual, somebody, by the way. I, we disagree on that one. No, do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because then, children, again, no, because, children on, because children, then, because children, because children, they are they are, they are innocent. They don't have these things. When they grow up, then they will they will be influenced by the community, by the society, and all of these things. These things happen in our community. By the way, there could be someone who have kind of tendencies to more, you could say, more weaker towards this emotion. This, these things happen, brother, the, the, the behind you, the camera, yeah. These things happen. Some people they surrender more to their emotion, but here. Where we draw the line? And you said now it's okay. To, it's okay for a son to have a relationship with his mother. You said no, it's okay to do it as long as they consent. As as there what kind of? No. As long as there is consent. Even if there is consent. Where I draw the line. Even if there is consent. You know do you accept this? Do you know you what? seriously accept? Do you know what? If you never, if you literally, you never. What I am saying is, in the majority of the cases, the incest. In, in, well, not to say a hundred percent of the cases of incest, what you have is an abusive relationship. No, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. And, and as well. You have and an as well, abusive relationship because you're not equal. No, why started. not equal? When you're someone, equal, according to the law, according, according to the law, if someone reached the age of 18 years old, for example, and his mother, so suppose she is yeah. 40 or whatever, yes. so both How of them. How many of those relationships do you know? These things happen. It happens. How many in, of those relationships it happens. Do you know? None. No, there are. Because, because that. No, not why not? Why not? It happens. Does it happen? When it happens. When it happens, incest happens, is because there is an abuse in the No, not necessarily. Very, very not necessarily. rarely, I, listen, you will find I read, listen. a man and a woman who have uh, a relationship of mother. I read, I read, they have listen, both one consent, second. in equal and, a good, you know, um, informed consent, and they decide to have a relationship. By the way, I, okay, no, no, it exists. And I read, and there are as well some cases. There are a few cases, there are a few cases. There are a few cases in America. And in Germany, well, and literally, have, I'm talking about there are a few cases, and those cases, literally, the the son who reached the age of 18 means, means according yes. to the law, is mature, yes. and his mother and his mother is such and such, for example, yes. years, and, they decide to have and then they decide to have relationship. Yeah, they, con they have a consent, yes. so there is no one abuse. Okay, fine. And so what? So you think it's okay? Yes. You think if that's totally? Both, you think that's that's totally agreement. okay? And they are this in consent, and there is no by the way. relation of power between them, which is pretty much impossible because the mother always has a no, no, no. Of a you see here, that is fine. Where is but, but going, but, but, but are, are you a but God you believer? Believe are you a God believer? No, if you are not a God believer, now that's why we go back to the point. If we need to understand, going back to the concept about why God, if there is a God, then there are rules. 
otherwise we could we could we could discuss here yeah, but many things it doesn't have to come from anybody no no the rules it has. come from the from the, the people that live together and that's why we have laws is, is that because the people you think you think that together, do you believe this yes, yes, I do you believe this yes I do. okay then that means do you accept that the people they have to choose their laws and then is these rules is implemented according to the to the to the choice of the people do you believe this so people ah, live together in London, they vote their representatives, they vote. then they create the laws, and then that's how democracy works. Okay, so right? you believe this? Yes, I do. Okay. Germany... I, I don't think it's perfect. Yeah, it has okay. a lot of mistakes, okay. but we don't know about Germany, that. Germany in the 30s, last century, in the 30s, they voted, and then all of them... And then the Nazis, and the Nazis... So you accept yes. this? Do you believe yes. this is okay? No. Why not? The people accept this. They voted. To, to put the people in categories, they voted to put the Jews in the bottom of the of the of the. They call them even species according to some of them. Yeah, you know, no, no, but they voted for it. Yeah. They, so they what? This is democracy. For it and then it changed into something very no, different. But, no, no. Everyone yes, literally, the Nazis, the Nazis accept this. So that's why when you say this, is do you literally you are contradicting yourself again? Because here, people themselves that shows that shows. People they couldn't choose for them for themselves. Nowadays, nowadays, in Israel, the so-called state, yeah, they vote. They have votes. They have voting. System. They call it the only democracy, whatever you know on earth. They said well, in the Middle East, and yet, and they vote. And what's the part of their vote? Part of their voting is literally to dehumanize the Palestinians who are living there, and literally dealing with them as creatures, as you know, whatever. So that's why voting and democracy. Because it's going back, it is subjective. So I believe in democracy. I don't believe yeah, yeah. in dictatorial systems. No, I, I don't. By the way, by the way, I don't no, believe in dictatorship. Listen, listen. listen, listen. No, listen to me. Yeah. Dictatorial systems impose because they think they know better than you what is good for the society. And I don't believe in dictatorial systems. Okay. I don't. Wherever they come from, whether yeah. they come, you know, whether the laws come from the creator, whether the laws come from, no. You okay. know, the, the, the people who live in society have the right to decide what's best for them. Good. So, and they can get it wrong, okay. of course, like they did the Nazi Maria, system. Maria, going back to the, to the main concept, yeah? So, I prove to you with, with, with two examples that shows the democracy, actually, it is still, it is subjective. A, you know, a approach is not objective approach. What the and I, what, one second, one second, one second. One second. I, I, the, 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 no, no, I don't, I don't. No, no, no. We have, the, we have something the, the called. The worst of the worst. No, we have, we have, we have, we have something called the Islamic system. The Islamic system has has shura, which is a board of advice to the leader, and those board of advice they are like ministers and others. They will have these things. And as well, these board of advisors up to the people, people who choose them, choose these elite people or those ones who are decision makers, they have to be as well people who are people of knowledge, who have the understanding of this, the, the contemporary situation and all of these things. Yeah. So there are a system in place. Brother, there's cameras behind you. Yeah? Oh. Now, now, why we go, we, 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 at the end of the day, because me and you, we have kind of a core disagreement. The core disagreement is not about these, these are side things. The core disagreement between me and you about the existence of God. That's the core dis dis disagreement. Now, that's why we need, well, let's discuss this now. And I, then. Uh, I don't doubt the disagree, the existence of God. So you believe I there is God? I could believe in God. Okay. Through logic, pure logic. Okay, good. Because I feel it here. Pure logic, you know, from nothing, nothing appears or whatever there is. Okay, good. So you, yes, believe, you yes, believe in God? But I don't believe that that God is either Allah or, or Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I don't know what that is. All right. Let, okay. But I don't believe. Okay. In let's any discuss. Of the okay. Let's that discuss. Are to me. Okay. Let's discuss now because maybe you read, but maybe it wasn't explained to you properly. So I'm, oh, I will yes, explain. It's been explained to me. No, I will. Maybe. <laughs> no. Maybe let me try. Maybe let me. If you accept, that's totally up to you. If you if you don't accept, that's totally up to you. So, you you mentioned earlier that you are a God believer, correct? Or you are, you don't I know. know there's something, but okay. I don't there's believe. something. So there is, there is a creator. This something, is it all powerful to create this universe? I've gone through this already. Is it all powerful? Probably. Probably or if, if it's weak, then it cannot create universe. Is it all powerful? Meaning the possessor of the power that he creates all this humongous universe. Possibly. Do you think, possibly. so is it possible to be weak? It's possible too. To be weak? 
weak creator? No, probably so, not. So is powerful. Secondly, is it knowledgeable, intelligent, knowledgeable to create this universe? We say yes. Yes? Okay. And it should have independent will. When I'm saying independent will, nothing is telling this creator, do this and don't do this. So he chooses to do things and choose not to do things. So this is the definition of God. Yeah. Let's use the term God now, and then after that we'll say, okay, since God has created this universe. You can convince me on a logical level. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about. Doing, yeah, yeah. But you will not convince me up here. We'll, we'll, come, we'll come to up here. Listen, we'll come to up here. That's why we need, I need you to open your mind and heart for the truth. Because Allah said, Allah, I will tell you something. Allah told us in the Quran, brother, I'm not, let, 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 we, we have a conversation. Can you? Yeah. No, no, uh, be careful. Okay. You come here. No, for her. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But you know, it's a waste of I, I'm not talking to you. Thank you. No, I, I wanted to finish. I wanted because I, I need to be because I don't I don't divert into many discussions. Yeah. So, going back to the point. So I want you to open your mind and heart for the truth, and that's that's the point. That's the main thing, because Allah told us in the Quran about the non-believers, saying to them, even if they see every sign, they will say we are we are blind, we are deaf. We cannot hear, we cannot see, even if they see the obvious thing. So, we, uh, us as, as Muslims, we, are, we have to present the truth to you. And at the end of the day, the guidance doesn't come from me or from him or from him. The guidance comes from God. Now here, that's why you need to open your heart. If that's truth, if there is a truth in something, I will follow it. Then in that case, it will open your heart for this. Now, since God has, you, we, me and you now, we have accepted there is a creator, which is God, has created this universe. Why did he create this universe? For what purpose? Is it for us to eat and drink and reproduce and that's it? Animals, they do a better job than us. And why did he give you faith and not me? Okay. Why did he give you the faith and not to me? Good. So God, by the way, God as well, will not give you the faith. God gives all of us the faith. We born, when we born, we are inclined to submit to God. We born with this. We are inclined when we born this. Even, by the way, Okay, you need to study some as well research, which was done by, by one of the one, many, many of the many of the big universities in the world. They said the children they are born inclined to believe to believe in God. They're inclined, okay, yeah. yeah? Inclined. So they said so we're inclined to believe in God. But now here it is the community, the society, the parents, upbringing, etc. Will divert this. Will 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 change you to be Christian, to be Jew, to be whatever. Exactly. That's totally, yep. you know, at the end of the day, or to be atheist. That's, that's so what parents you say. Transmit to the children what they think is best. Yes. Okay. So the, uh, whatever, yeah, yeah, they try their best. They will, they will do this. Yeah. So now, now here, so they, that's you have the opportunity, and as well, God has sent all the prophets and messengers since Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, and all other prophets. They came to convey the message of God to the people, and the message of Islam still. As it is, the Quran is available for everyone. The Quran is available for the people to read, and as well the scholars of Islam, as well they are there to answer the question. So it is there. So if you wanted to ask and to why to to find the faith, the faith is there to you. Now it's up to you. You need to choose to accept, or you need to choose not to accept. We as Muslims, why there is no Why have you chosen? Why have you chosen? Good. I have been chosen. Okay. Now here, God give us as well what we call it the free will. You have the free will to choose. So God didn't force us to become Muslim. God didn't force us to follow what, what we have to follow. God give us the choice. That's okay. what God loves from right. us. So once from you, once from Mary, to look at Islam and to be convinced of Islam and to accept Islam. Okay. So that's what God wants from you right. so and loves say. from that. But if God forces you to become a Muslim, what is your free choice? Yes. Of, of so, choice? so it's giving me free will, right? Yes. So let's say that now I read the Quran, I, you know, but it doesn't convince me. It's okay. not my thing, right? No. Then how does the creator explain that? You know, after me, because there's, there's people who have read, explored it, and they decided to go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah? Now, so how, how does the, the Islam really explain that? You yeah. say that I've been given free will, that I, because you, you're in a way saying that I have my free will, but I've not explored and that's why I'm not Muslim. But yeah, imagine yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, you're not a Muslim. No, no, no. Maybe. So, how do you explain that? So, the guidance in Islam is, is in three things. The guidance to Islam is in three things. Firstly, the guidance that Allah will show you the truth. This is the truth. So, it's presented to you. 
the second one that Allah will lead you to the truth with different things. Part of that, part of that, we believe everything is decreed. You came here today to ask about God, to ask about this. This part of God leads you to this. Okay, you want to find the truth. There is the truth here. There is someone here wanted to present the truth to you in a good manner. Yeah. Was I? Was I? Did I? Did I have a good manners with you so far? Okay, good. Yeah. So that's what I want. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the third guidance is after you accepting the truth. The third guidance that to keep after we follow the truth to keep us firm upon the truth. To, st to be steadfast on that road. So that's why these are the guidance in Islam, the three types. Showing you the path, leading you to the path, and making you steadfast upon that path, the path of the truth. So this is what God wants from us. And that's what God made it clearly for us in the Quran as, as well according to the authentic sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, since you came here, you wanted to ask about God. You wanted to know about God. <coughs> you wanted to know about God. We're here to, to say to you, okay, since we, me, me and you have accepted that God has created us, for what purpose he has created us? What is the purpose? So that's why Islam presents the answer, saying the purpose of your creation, that you need to submit your will to the will of God, willingly, to choose to do that. So that's why God facilitated all of these things, sending all the prophets and messengers to us, and as well sending the Quran, an amazing text, was sent 1400 years, and it has an amazing information that it is impossible, impossible, do you understand? It's impossible for someone illiterate man living in the in the desert in the Arab Peninsula will be able to say these things. It is impossible. Do you know to what me, means impossible? Me, you know, I don't know much about Quran, so you can excuse me here. I'm probably talking Good. without knowing what I'm saying. Good. But I'm here to teach you what is the what is what the Quran. I've heard, maybe I'm Good. wrong, is that the Quran was not written at the beginning. It was an oral tradition, wasn't it? Was an oral tradition and no, it was passed. No, no, it was written and uh, written and verbally. But initially, initially it was, it was an was oral compiled. tradition and then it was compiled later on. Okay. Is that right? I will tell you how is it. Let me tell you something. The Quran was memorized by by a huge number of the of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet. At the same time it was written on a patches here and there during the time of Bakr brought these things together in one book. So, but, so before that, before that somebody actually wrote it, it not was, somebody, some it was people. Oral. It was passing from one person to another. No, no, no. And I believe, maybe no, I'm wrong. No, you're wrong. I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. So what happened when Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, when he brought the companions to put the Quran together, to put them together, that they need, they need to have firstly that they each, each one who has that in one of these patches, he has to bring two witnesses that testifying that each single verse that he heard it from the Prophet and it was written in his presence. You understand? So it was it was a very sophisticated process and as well, that's why it's a so sophisticated process which is no there is no single book on earth went through that sophisticated process like the Quran. So that's why can you imagine each single verse of the Quran, someone who wrote it at the time of the Prophet himself to testify that I heard it and I said it is not sufficient. He has to bring another two people. Let me, I'm, I'm finishing. He has to bring another two people who were there. Those two people, they have to be trustworthy and they have to be known amongst the people that they are known people. And then they will say, yes, we saw him was with the Prophet when this verse, when he was writing it in the front of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Do you understand how sophisticated it is? I that, and I, do you know how many verses the, in the Quran? And the, that's why. All these that verses. The chances an oral tradition will be written to the letter yeah, to the letter to the letter to the vowel are super slim that an oral tradition this is not again written, this is not an oral tradition this, this again <laughs> this is not an oral tradition it's written to the it letter. is not again it is so, so let me, it is let me not get, let me get something right listen. so the prophet muhammad says whatever okay, one of these um listen again let me repeat he, let, he says something again says somebody writing it Someone is writing it, and someone is, and people are memorizing it. As he's saying it. As he's saying it. There's somebody there writing it. Yeah, and that's not just only that. He will say, and I will tell you something. In Islam, there is the Quran, which is the word of God. And by the way, this is the translation. It's the word of God. And as well, there is the saying of the Prophet. There are certain things, certain wisdom that the Prophet said. And when he was right, when he was saying to the people to write, he said, this is a Quran. This is something which is from God, not from me. This is the Quran. Yeah, so the people who were there, they were right, and some and people will memorize. So what happens? And it was keep checked until it was all compiled together. 
until the end of the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. And so and that it, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm just trying to make I'm it finishing. Clear. So what was right in Britain and what was said? Exactly the same. They needed to be compared in order to ensure that it was the, exactly what he said. Yeah, yeah, am I right? Exactly. Yeah, and, okay. uh, and on top of this, that the, la the, la the last year of the Prophet peace be upon him before he died, that in the, in the month of Ramadan, Jibreel, peace be upon him, came to the Prophet وسلم, made him to recite the Quran back to him. So it was recited back to the, between him and Jibreel, the only Quran. And then he brought some of the companions who are known, who memorized the Quran, like, uh, like, uh, uh, like Ubay radiallahu anhu and others. Uh, so they, he brought them. And then he recited the Quran to them, and they recited, they recited back to him, as it is from A to Z, all of it, with vowels, with everything. Then when it was compiled, this is why it was compiled verbally, and as it was written. At the time of Abu Bakr, he brought all of these patches, brought them, and, and compiled it in one book. Do you understand? So it's a process. It is the most sophisticated process that was happened. So there is no any single, single error that can be can be done with this process. And so let me no. get this right. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. So because the Quran is, it was written in such um, sophisticated, sophisticated way, then this is whatever says in the Quran for Muslims no is the that. word of God. Yes. And therefore, there's no doubt whatsoever about what is exactly know, what he needs to what yes. you need to do. Exactly. Right. So what happens? Because I guess that when this book was um, when when uh, Muhammad re received the, this message Revelation. from the revelations from the Creator, yeah. there were no such things like now, like for example, I don't know, virtual reality or so. How how is the how will the Muslim world evolve with all the changes that are happening? Because there are there are lots of things that I guess I know that there's that he was. The f ahead of his time, he predicted a lot of things that then happened later on. But I guess that it gets to a point where he, you know, he said this, and then there's a future who is not oh. going to be exactly the same, or, or there's nothing in the book of, about that particular thing that will happen in 20 years. That is the miracle of the Quran. The miracle of the Quran that it is, it is applicable in any time in any place. That's the amazing thing about the Quran. Any time and any place. So that's why you will find Muslims from all around the world. People in Pakistan, they follow Islam. They have their own culture. They have their own situation. They have their own challenges in the life. They have their own culture. And yet, they identify themselves as Muslims and they follow Islam to the text. As will you find people in Africa. They have their own culture. They have their own things. They have their own challenges. And yet, they will accept Islam. Your own son, he is... He's, he's 18. Are you 18? 18 or, or not? Yeah, huh? June. June. You're going to be in June. Yeah. So he's nearly 18 years old. Yeah. Living in a Western country. Yeah. And lived all and uh, with uh, with uh, for example with uh, with kind of agnostic mother and etc. And yet accepting Islam and follow Islam and think Islam doesn't contradict you know his life. He can go and study and work and do what he wanted to do as long and he knows himself as, as a Muslim. So all of these things, why you think how Islam is how Islam is amazing and is still applicable in a Western country and applicable in African country and applicable in the Arab countries and applicable everywhere. How is that? How is that? No, I will tell you what. No, there are as I said to you, Islam, there are main concepts. Main concept, submitting to God, submitting your will to the will of God, following the commandments of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And of course, there are certain things. That's why Allah says to us in the Quran, part of it. And there is a verse mentioned in the Quran, bil-urf, command with the urf. Urf in Arabic means tradition, habits of the people, the way of the people. As long as it doesn't contradict the Quran, these things is acceptable in Islam. These things, that's why we don't go, for example, to do something that is odd to the to the people. No, we do things that as long as within within as long as the as the people they are they are they, 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 they have the norm habits, they have the norm, for example, modest, etc. And they have the norm uh, or good habits, etc. Allah Azza told us Allah they didn't say to us to, to go against these things. In fact, we are we are, we have to follow whatever we have to follow Islam and in the same time as well we have to appreciate where we live. So that's why we are very law abiding people. You know, that, yeah, we follow the law. We don't, we don't go against the law. And if someone say, oh, why, why Islam doesn't say to you to stop by the red light? 
Islam telling me, yeah, you Islam to follow, to follow the to follow the the, the rule Islam. of the land. That makes me to be flexible. But are you saying that you know Islam is followed in the same way in Somalia? In you know, you're giving different examples of countries, but there are different ways, different, different strands to go to Islam, aren't they? Now again, we have to. So is, is to Iran something. an Islamic state? Now let me tell you something. Is it Afghanistan and the Taliban an Islamic? Okay. Is it or not? Let me. I will. Now here, I'm not here to discuss politics. I'm no, here no, to no, talk about Islam. politics. Hey. I'm only asking you. I will tell you. Are Taliban Muslims? Are Taliban? Yes, they are, they are Muslims. Are yes. they Muslims? The, which one? The 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 the, 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 the Shias. The Shias. The, the the one. The one who are the the imams of the Shias. They are not Muslims. I don't believe they are Muslims. But I will tell you. I will explain to the point. My point is that in Islam recognized to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, the way of the Quran, the way of the Sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him. Now, if there are some wrong practices by the people, that's not necessarily from Islam. For example, Islam actually, the Prophet peace be upon him, at his time, women came to the Prophet ﷺ. They said to him, you know, the companions, they come to you, and we need you to give us a day, a day to teach us. He, that they asked him to give us a day. So he was giving them Monday to teach them. So he was teaching the women on Monday, peace be upon him. So that's why anyone who say we prevent women from learning, that's not from Islam. You understand? You see, but then, then how then uh, there are countries who call themselves Islamic countries? Behind you, the cameras, brother. The cameras behind you. You are here for camera. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so how then they call themselves Islamic, or do you consider them being Islamic countries when they are going completely against what the Quran says? Okay. Not necessarily they go completely against the Quran. We need to understand. Oh, oh, they, they, uh, there are different strands, are they? So what, what, we say, the what we Sunday, say, what we say, leave, names, leave, but... leave all of these things. No, and no, I don't want to leave it. I want to, I want no. to respond to I want you to come to the point, which is, now, if what you accept point? Islam, why don't you be the Muslim who's going to be helping other Muslims no, 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 to live. No, no. Why don't you be, about, instead of... I'm not talking about me accepting Islam. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about... And I'm talking about you accepting why, Islam. Yeah, but not me. <laughs> I want to know yeah. what's your opinion about <coughs> certain countries who call themselves Islamic, me, Iran, me, Afghanistan... Me as a person. Let yes, me tell you, I'll give you generally. And, and generally this me as a person. World, me as a person. And this is what Islam says. Me as a person. Anything that goes with the Quran and the Sunnah, goes with the Quran of, the, of Allah and the Sunnah, the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, I accept it. And anyone that goes against it, I'm against it. As simple as that. Regardless, even if my own father doing something against Islam, I will say he's wrong. I don't care. As long as, and for me, my relation with the people is according how much they are close to the following the Quran and the authentic son of the Prophet Sallallahu and how far they are from that. This how is it. So if someone is that, following that, that yeah? yeah, if someone is following that this, is I accept. Answer. If someone so, is not following, so, so that's me as a person. What's the name of the Sunnites and the Sunan Shias? Yeah. yeah. So, so what, what, what's this? There are. Is it is this the same like saying, for example, the Catholic Church and the Protestants? Is it is it the same sort of situation? It's that kind are, of more. It's kind of more more. No, between Orthodox. They are Christians, yeah. all of them, but then within Christianism, then you have Catholicism, you have the, the Church of England, you have the, you know, is, is it the same with Islam? No. Do you have these two strands? Let me tell you something. Islam came to relieve us and to release us from being worshiper from other than God. Not to be worshipping no one. We don't worship Muhammad, peace be upon him. We don't yep, worship. Yep. We follow him, but we don't worship him. Yep. And if anyone calls people to Instead, and part of the worship is making dua supplicate. So when we supplicate, we supplicate to God. We ask God, oh God, help us, oh God, give us, whatever, yeah? Yep. So if someone is telling us, you can supplicate to someone other than Allah, then he is doing something, major sin in Islam, which is considered to be shirk, and which means associating with God partners. So those who they call themselves, they say, you can call the saints, you can call Ali. You can call Hussein, you can call the Prophet, and that's something that's not from Islam. So that's why we say to them, that's from Islam, not from Islam, we don't accept. So it's totally different, because unfortunately in Christianity, nowadays the Christian, Catholicism and Protestant and other things, because at the end of the day, they kind of, they agree on a certain concept. They, they still consider to be just to be son of God, or God, whatever, yeah? And the same thing, some people from the, who they call themselves Muslim, they believe that God can become in a form of, Ali or something like that, and that is this is not from Islam. We say this is this is you. You follow Christianity better for you. But is it right that? Is that clear? You, you, 
you belong to the is that clear? Sunni I think Sunni, Sunni, Sunni. So you belong to the Sunni, yeah? And there is this other one, I can't remember the name. The Shias. The Shias. So do the Shias think, so you're saying that the Shias may not follow some of the rules, so you don't, those that do not follow the rule, let alone the, you know, the Shias or Sunnis, yeah. you don't consider them to be Muslim. Each one, so do each they, one. Do the Shias think the same about the Sunnis? Now, what they say, they say we follow the family of the Prophet including the cousin of the Prophet, including the grandson of the Prophet, and the inheritance of the grandson. As if Islam, there is no, the message of Islam is not inherited by people. The message of Islam is by the message of Islam as it is. So that's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, Allah tested him not to have sons of his own who survived after his death, because Allah wants, Allah wants Islam to be following the Quran, to following the Sunnah, not because of the inheriting, the, the sons of the Prophet and then to follow them or whatever. Yeah. So if the grandsons of the Prophet, which is from his daughter, still people, they are demolished and they start worshipping them, this happens. How if he has sons? So Islam wanted us to demolish all of these things, to be all of our inclination has to be all of it to be related to God, not to no one, not to anyone other than God. Yeah. So that's why whatever they think about us, I don't care. I care what the Quran says and I care what the Prophet peace be has said. That is what I care about. You understand? I understand. So, now going back to you, Maria. So since we said to you, since this, since the Quran is the message we believe is the message of God, now we put the Quran into test. We see if this Quran came from God, and then we put it into test. And that's the key thing, yeah. The test which we put in the Quran. I think you studied some science, correct? Have you studied some science in your life? Yeah. Okay. So Quran is not a science book, but it has scientific facts. When I'm talking about facts. Facts that it is impossible for someone, illiterate man, and Muhammad was illiterate, yep. he doesn't have access to the knowledge of his time, let alone to the knowledge before his time. Yep. He didn't have access to this. And yet Muhammad was able to say these things, and only then, only recently the science discovered what he said to be truth. Yep. Don't you think a book like this cannot be, that's why we say, so is it, there is no any possibility to assume this book came from other than God. Like for example, when you in the night, if it's a clear sky and you look to the stars, yeah? Okay, when you see clear sky, do you see the stars now? No. Or what do you see? When, when, do, when, when the stars, when, this light, when, how many years away from us? Millions of years away from us, yeah? So literally when you look into the stars in the night, yeah, when the light departs from the stars and it reaches your eye, it takes millions of years. Yep. So by the moment that you're talking now, when you see the star, that star may be moved. Yep. That star turned into black hole or whatever, yeah? <coughs> so you see the position of the star, yes? We have a verse in the Quran saying, Muhammad, Allah, Allah saying, And I will make, I will not make an oath by the positions of the star. And it's a great oath. If you would know, you will know it's a so great oath. So when God making an oath by something in the Quran, that it tells you there's something so important, you should ponder, you should think. And God is talking about the position of the star. So this, according to them at that time, meaning telling them, you don't know what is the meaning of these words, the meaning of the position of the stars. At that time, the people, they say, they think the position of the star means the direction, east, west, etc., which is valid. Valid interpretation. And as we nowadays, when we discover, and we have the telescopes and everything, then we discover that when you look to the star, you literally, you see the positions of the star. Can you imagine a book, 1400 years, talking about the positions of the stars in the, in the sky? You see, you see yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Continue. And on top of this, That's and on top of this, one second, on top of this, we said the, the stars move. Why? Because the universe is expanding. And Quran confirms this. We have created the heavens and we are expanding it. So can you imagine God is telling us the sky above you, the universe above you is expanding. But to me, they said that the fact that he said, talked about the position of the stars, doesn't mean in my world that Muhammad predict or knew... Muhammad didn't predict. Sorry, That's the creator. The creator said. predict that the stars, you know, send their, you know, their light with these years. So uh, to me, that's an assumption. Okay. Do you uh, use the positions of the listen, stars listen. to then say that he Ca predicted in advance. Uh, okay, good. Or you know, the, with the scientific the good, we know now. The good so thing. That's an assumption. No, the good thing, the amazing thing, 
that Quran doesn't contradict this concept. Yes, yeah? it doesn't, it doesn't predict it. And on top of this, what about expanding the universe? Again, I don't know. I, you know I okay, I'm I saying to you here, yeah, that's why Allah says, Allah says in the Quran, we have created the heavens and we are expanding. So God is saying that he is expanding the heavens. So the heavens above, above us is expanding. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? Allah says in the Quran as well that Allah says that the heavens and the earth, they were together and they were split. They were split. So they were together at certain point. And then they split. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? And there are more in the Quran. For example, you've been to the ocean, correct? Do, what do you think someone, any diver could dive in the ocean 1400 years ago? Would anyone know that deep in the ocean, what's happening there? Would anyone know? Would anyone, would anyone know that deep in the ocean is pitch dark, there is no light there, absence of light? Would anyone know at that time? Could have imagined, I guess. Imagine, but it's not subject. God says in the Quran, so those who are away from the guidance of God, like someone deep in the bottom of the ocean, above him there is a wave, above the wave there is another wave, above the sea there is a cloud. Even if he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness. And whomever God, did, God didn't send him. Listen, listen. Don't use, don't use your own interpretation. I'm saying to you. Now, I'm talking to you about a detailed darkness. Now, now what is the relationship between, between the waves and the darkness? Can you kill me? The and this is what the science came to interpretate. That's why we study science. That's why I study PhD in mathematics. That's why I understand when I study science, I do understand where, where, where these things coming from. According to the physics, if there is, if there is waves in the water, it, it will break the light. When it breaks the light, which means underneath that wave, it's darker. And if only, this is totally different from the clear water. So the clear water will make the light go through. But if it's waves, it, it, that's why it, is, it breaks the light. Now listen to this. I will tell you. To me, that's not what he's saying. No, that's what it says. No. Now here, where there is a cloud, there is the sunlight. Now, now they discover 40% of the light will be reflected back. And only 60% will go through. So these are the layers of darkness which God has said. So firstly, God says, waves, another layer of waves, and a cloud. This is what God described in the Quran exactly, precisely. Now we know that the cloud will, will reflect. Everyone appreciates this, no problem. Surface waves of the sea, again, people appreciate the waves. Someone could dive in an in a, you know, in a, in a ocean and see the waves that could break the fire. Now we discovered recently, only recently, that deep in the ocean, there are waves going, traveling in another direction. They are called the sea current. This is discovered recently. We're talking about not more than 100 years. These are new discovery. They discovered, and these, the, the, the sea current, they travel by waves, amazingly. They are travel by waves, they're like rivers underneath the sea, underneath the surface, and they go, and they go, and they travel by waves. So if you are under under the, these waves, with these two layers of waves, even if you took your hand like this out of your pocket, you will look at it, you will be unable to see it. This is in a time where at the people of that time, they used to think the eye could see by itself. To me, there is still a great deal of interpretation from that description to what you were saying. That is a can you tell me? Can you tell me single discovery about the sea current in the ocean at 1400 years? No. So Quran says there is a layer of waves under the ocean. Who taught Muhammad about it? The one who knows. What about what do you, what do you think the people knows about what's happening to the to the baby, the fetus in the womb of the mother? What do you think they know? 1400 years. And by the way, Muhammad lived in a desert. He he doesn't live by the sea to know this. So he lived in a desert. Going back to the point, what about the womb of them in the mother? How the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother? Do you think people would know at that time? Probably not. Okay. So God described this. God said we have firstly. God says initially it was similar to what looked like a blood clot, small cell. Then it became like a leech. You know the leech? What's the leech? What does it do? It hangs. It hangs and it sucks blood. So God described exactly. It's like a leech in the womb. And that leech developed into bones. And this bones covered with the flesh. And this flesh came into new creation. No, sorry. After the leech then became into similar to a bite. 
what is uh, like a bite. And this bite developed into bones, and these bones came covered with flesh, and then it became a new creation. That's not how it happens. Have you studied it? I mean, embryology, I only studied a little bit. Okay. You don't get first bones and then flesh. No, it actually, became, actually, became, um, actually, develops at the same time. no, actually, actually, because the structure of the body needs something to rely on. So the first thing when these, the, the, the beginning of the nerve the system, spine, yes. the, the spine, that's what, that's why, that's why, yes. that's why, yes. that's the main thing. So that's the spine. Is for yes, the that's spine. So Allah says, then bones. And then these bones develop to the other things. And then you are, there is an assumption there. No, there's no Between assumption. Between the leash and what the embryo, yes, because the leash sucks blood, and then you say, well, an embryo will do that. But there is an assumption there that he is Who talking assumed? about an embryo. No, 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 no. He's talking about a leash, not an embryo. No, he's he talking doesn't. about similar, alaqa, alaqa, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, alaqa, similar. No, alaqa, which is it, translation, if you see it. Alaqa, even if you look at it, if you have, do you have the book, The no, Science, no, 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 brother? No, 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 the book, yeah. I'm yeah. And I'm, I'm really hungry yeah? now. I think we're going to have to. Just so, yeah. so that's why, so that's why, when when these things like a blood clot, no one sees it except recently, it will become like similar to this, this the beginning of the first cell, then it developed to something called alaqa. Alaqa, they said, some of the scholars they said, by the way, alaqa it has two meanings in Arabic. It has the meaning of the leech, which is that leech, and as well it has the meaning as well, which is the the, the when when the blood surrounds together when this is true. It's a bigger than a clot, that they call it Allah. So here, it has the two meanings. The point is, how God has in, has mentioned this, yeah? And I think this is the, here, I will show you. And all of these things are mentioned in the Quran. We're talking about things that is mentioned 1400 years ago. And to say, amazingly... Is that a book of the things, uh, the yes. things that he predicted? Yes. And... Yeah? So, look at it. These are what we are talking about, the bones. Yep. And these are the beginning of the hands. And that's why which is the covered, then it was covered with the flesh. Look at this. And that's what we call it when I said to you, like a gum or like a, like a bite. This before it developed to this. Yeah? All of these things. As we look at this about the mountains. This is the mountains. Yeah? Like pigs. This is only discovered again recently. How the mountain is like a... So the mountain on top is there. The one which holds the mountain is that. All of these things tell you... Can I keep this? Yeah, that's for you. Oh, thank you very much. I'll bring it. Yeah, thank that's you. for you. I think I have to leave it here because we no haven't problem. had any food and we, <laughs> we have to also make up No problem. I wish. Thank you very, very much for the uh, yeah, you, are, you are welcome and you are welcome. I hope I have answered your question. And, oh, and as well, I hope that I was... We had yeah, a, absolutely, we had a polite conversation. We enjoyed it. Look after good. yourself, and you, and you have an amazing son. May Allah bless him. Yeah, may Allah bless him. And he's he's a beautiful brother. I know him, by the way. Yeah, may Allah bless him, and may Allah Azzal, you know increase him in all khair. And by the way, if there is something in Islam, the most amazing thing in Islam, that our Prophet peace be upon him, he said, a man came to him. He said, what are the rights of the people who are who are the most people I have to fulfill their rights? He said to him, your mother. He said to him, then who? He said, then your mother. He said, then who? He said, then your mother. Three times. He said, then who? He said, then your father. Can you imagine? Islam tells us to be good to our mother. Islam tells us to be beautiful to our mother. Not to say even words that upsets them. Of in Arabic, something, words which is to say, bah, or no, or something like that. Not to say this to them. That's what Islam is telling us. So you can imagine what Islam is telling us to be good to our parents. And and that's this is the amazing this is one of the most amazing things in Islam, and and as well and and there is always you know things being uh, especially the manners and to deal with each other with, with the parents and good manners and to to deal with the people around you with good manners. These are one of the duties of a Muslim, and that's why Islam manages this and telling us to do that. Inshallah. Thank All you right, very much. no problem. Look after yourself, Malik. All right, salam alaykum. All right, look after yourself, my brother. All right, look after yourself. Bye, bye. Look after yourself. Okay, inshallah. Salam alaykum. Good health. Allah bless you. Jazak Allah khair. Allah bless you. Okay, inshallah, my brothers and sisters. May Allah guide her and may Allah bring her to the guidance. Alhamdulillah. We try to explain to her. Inshallah, hopefully, that she will learn. Inshallah, about Islam. May Allah bring her to the guidance. And mashallah, she has an amazing son. May Allah bless him and increase him in all khair and keep him steadfast upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jazak Allah khair. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaykum, brother. Hello, brother. You're right. You okay? Alhamdulillah. Glad to see you today. How are you? How's everything? You come with the father, yeah?
Okay. What? Kids with afraid. I'm telling you. Him? It's like a little bit. It's like a little bit. Yeah, drum. Be careful. So, I don't know. Like, if something happens. I thought you were going to dump us there. Huh? I thought you were going to dump me, you guys, man. Ah. Oh, that's perfect.